Thank you so much for checking out this free video. If you don't mind, please click like and subscribe. A, uh, the Forbidden Door early pay-per-view buy rate numbers or the buys you, you had in the Observer as mm -hmm. 110-ish is kind of the number one, that you have right now? 110 to 116, 120 maybe. Yeah. I mean, I think that the um, holiday kind of might make the reporting slow, but it was lower than I expected. You know, I mean, I was... It's funny because almost every pay, um, AEW pay-per-view I think virtually everyone always does better than I expect for whatever reason. Um, and this one is, is well down. So uh, whatever reason, um, you know, I mean, the ratings have been down. I mean, there's, there's that the uh, um, maybe double or nothing. Um, you know, I don't know. I don't, you know, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, this pay-per-view was two unproven pay-per-view main eventers mm -hmm. and who had an incredible, incredible match. But they were unproven pay-per-view main eventers, and it sometimes takes time. When you put an unproven pay-per-view main eventer in the pay-per-view main event, um, sometimes it works right away, and oftentimes you got to go with a few weak ones until people accept them in that position. Mm -hmm. So it, it it could be that, you know. I mean, um, you know, I mean, Swerve Swerve was not the main event of Double or Nothing. That was the the anarchy in the arena. Yeah. So um, um, you know, they did have the three way. Uh, but but for the most part, and and Will, this was his first main event, so um, it may just be um, early, and the fans are not uh, at that level. The buyers, you know, I mean, the fans in the fans who are there who pay the money, I mean, they went crazy for that match, and they go crazy for both of those guys. You know, those whatever it is, the couple thousand people in every city when they go to TV that are the real AEW hardcore fans, mm -hmm. uh, you know, they're very over to them, but in the outside, you know, are they, um, you know, this would tell me that, no, it's not. Um, they're not, they're not quite there yet. So, um, uh, but it's probably better in this case to probably, I even think this week coming up might even still be a little bit behind. I think maybe the week after I'll, have, you know, is, is what the one where I'd say I'm, more confident on the number but i do know streaming wise it was it was the same as dynasty which did around 120 um and if that's and and if that's the case then yeah i mean it's still much lower than i had thought and and most people had thought that it would do what which, did tony say right after the show was over didn't he say it was he said great but he didn't give a number okay i thought he had said like better than last forbidden door or something he didn't say that no okay no, it's not better than last year's Forbidden Door. Last year's Forbidden Door ended up doing pretty good, and both actually both of the previous ones did well. This one is the first one that that didn't do well. Um, but you know, here's the other thing: the concept of Forbidden Door used to be that's when you get your you know big Okada match. You know what I mean? I mean now it's you know there's who you know I mean, Shingo Takagi, great wrestler, but he doesn't mean as much as Okada in that type of a situation, and like. Mystico, it's Okada it's, didn't even mean as much as Okada. He was like the second no. or third match on the pay per view in a six man tag and everything. Yeah. So the 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 import importing of Will Osprey and you know some other and 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 the other New Japan guys and Okada, which you know Will Osprey and Okada were like the two big ones. You know, in the previous Forbidden Doors, it's like they're normal regulars now. So they're not going to move it as much because it's not Forbidden Fruit. You know, you get that all the time. The, the new stuff would have been the stardom women. And, you know, I think I thought Mina Shirkow did well on television, but yeah. I didn't. But, but you know, I don't think that that's someone who is going to, you know, uh, make a big difference in, in pay-per-view buys. And and the the Mexicans um, didn't. And, and you know, again, and, and, and look, they were on the pre-show anyway. So, you yeah, know I mean? that's why I think if they're going to do this again next year, I think you really got to build up the, the Mystico idea because what else is there? But I don't know that he's like that special with Okada. I mean, like he's great to a certain group of people, but that group of people wants to watch Lucha Libre, not American wrestling. Um, whereas like the New Japan fans will watch AEW. The Lucha Libre fans want to watch Lucha Libre. It's a different thing. The vibe is different. Um, I mean, it's one of those things where um, when when they used to do indie shows, with american wrestlers and they'd bring in somebody from mexico 
it didn't really draw that good but if you do a full lucha show you draw a whole bunch of people who never go mm. to american wrestling um and you know i i've been to both i've seen like i've seen really good american workers on lucha shows get no reaction because to the lucha fans who cares um and the style's different so they're 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 more they're further apart even though all styles are melting closer together because everybody's watching the same tapes and you know like uh the complete difference in style isn't there anymore, but, but it, there's still an existence of the, you know, it's still a different rhythm. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's like, you know, I think, I think that there's, there was a lot more, um, to the American fan. I think that there was just a lot more buzz on new Japan from like 2015 oh, yeah. to 2020 because, or 20 until the pandemic, just because the, it was so good and people knew about it and everything. And, and when they would come on Ring of Honor shows, they drew really big for Ring of Honor, and and New Japan could come on its own and draw very nicely. Like that's not really the case anymore. Um, the interest in New Japan is way down, um, both because it's not as hot a promotion, and also because the key stars are are either got old or are gone. You know, I mean, but both. It's like you you know. Um, I mean, when we're talking about like the, the key, the key guys who were really the ones who, who got over, you know, which would have been in this country were, you know, Kenny Omega, Young Bucks who were full-time AEW, Okada, Tanahashi, who got old, Naito, who got old, um, Nakamura, who, let, you know, who's in WWE now. Um, I mean, those were really, um, you know, the big four, Tanahashi, Naito, Okada and Nakamura. Right. Yeah. And then Kenny is the big foreign star. And then the follow up foreign stars were Will Ospreay and Jay White, who are also in AEW now. So Jay White, not even on that show. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned uh, with Brian, you were saying how, you know, the build to all in and we kind of know where things are going. So they're at 40,000 tickets sold based mm -hmm. on your feel from what you've seen. Now, we don't know all the matches yet. Um, do you think they could get to 50? Yeah, I think so. I think that when they, um, I think that they'll, you know, if they, if they start lowering prices, I think they can get to 50. I don't know about 60. That's, you know, 50 is fine. I do 50. wonder if there are people waiting for the prices to go down. A little there bit. are. I, I don't, I mean, how many, I don't know. I know people who are. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, like I said, how many that I couldn't tell you. And it stalled. I mean, it's like these 40, the thing with the 40 is, is they all bought it week one. So mm -hmm. they've sold like nothing since week one, which is really, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a really weird selling pattern. I mean, is it going to pick up really big now that the show is about to happen? Um, and now that we're going to have a card and maybe with the ticket prices dropping, maybe, or maybe if that's, I mean, it's really weird to like, like months ago, they were at 40 and they're still at 40. Like every time I see it, it's like, there's like no movement at all. But I mean, it's a great, it's, it's still a great number historically for wrestling. I mean, it's going to end up if they get to uh 55, I mean, it'd be the, what would it be? The uh, third biggest ever in Europe or in, not in Europe, but in, in, in the UK. Because the biggest is, uh, you know, the All In and, and the uh, 1992 Wembley, and then the third would be Clash at the Castle, which was uh, fifty three nine ninety nine paid, which this could beat, um, you know, if, if not fourth. So I mean, it's still like an all time, you know, number. But um, and I, I mean, again, when they did the first one, I mean, I didn't expect them to come back and do sixty the next year. Mm -hmm. I just didn't think that the 99 was there. 50, I mean, I'd consider 50 a success. 40 is what it is. I wouldn't call it a failure. I, I think I would have called 20 to 30 a failure. Um, 40, I wouldn't call it a failure. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.